In this episode, we are going to be checking out a Sydney bakery that went absolutely viral last year. I don't think I have ever been more excited to try a piece of pastry. Welcome to episode 6 of my mission to find the best bakery in Sydney. If this is the first time you've watched a bakery tour of mine, first of all, welcome, but also allow me to explain why. I'm actually more of a savory rather than a sweets person. It's not to say I don't like sweets, it's just that if I was given the choice between say a bowl of laksa or a piece of cake, I would rather have the bowl of laksa. Which was why I was genuinely surprised at how pastries obsessed I became after I checked out Lune Croissant in Melbourne some time back. And I have since then been on a mission to find a bakery in Sydney that is as good or even better than Lune Croissant. And since then, I have been to some of Sydney's most well-known bakeries, including AP Bakery, Load Pies and Pastries, Tenacious Bakehouse, Flour and Stone, and Humble Bakery. In this episode, we are gonna be checking out a Sydney bakery that went absolutely viral last year for this pastry. I am of course talking about Banksia Bakery and in this video, I'm gonna be trying out this viral piece of pastry for the very first time actually, as well as some of their other best sellers. And so if that sounds like your kind of jam, well then jump on in and let's head to Banksia Bakery. Banksia Bakehouse is located at 225 George Street at the Grosvenor Place. It is literally walking distance from the Bridge Street light rail stop right smack bang in the middle of Sydney CBD. They do an array of sweet and savoury pastries but also do cakes and are open from 7.30am to 3.30pm Mondays to Fridays, 8am to 1pm on Saturdays and are closed on Sundays. I have included the Google Map location pin in my description box so that you can plan your trip accordingly. Right, so I'm back. Let me just quickly show you what I got. So we have got this pretty little box here and I don't know if I can show you this without it toppling but it's a shoe pastry. Look at that. I have also got myself a box of treats. Let me just also just quickly comment on how beautiful the packaging is. I'll do another close up later. But we have got my plain croissant. If this is the first video of mine that you've seen, don't worry, I'll explain in just a little bit. I've also got myself a sweet potato danish. I decided to try something a bit more savory this time. Um, so that's a sweet potato danish. And you guys, when I saw this one, I was like, you know, we're just gonna get it because it just looked freaking amazing. And that's this creme brulee tart slash Danish. But I also got something quite special from this store and it's, it's just what they have absolutely been known for. Um, and you know what guys, I'm so surprised that I didn't ruin it while bringing it back. I'm of course talking about their famous wheel croissant that went absolutely viral last year and actually is almost always sold out but I did go on a weekday which kind of I guess increased my chances at getting my hands on one. A plain croissant is a non-negotiable on my order list if I'm visiting a bakery for the first time. And that's because a plain croissant has absolutely nothing like fillings or toppings to hide behind. It's either good or not. Now there are three things that I normally look out for in a piece of croissant before I make my final decision. Let me now change camera angles to show you the first one. So that's the plain croissant right there. We are going to now cut through it. And the first thing you want to look out for is that crunch. And hopefully we will get it. There you go. But you know, this one's a lot fluffier than the other ones I've had in at the other bakeries um, before. So the second thing you want to look out for, this. Look at those bubbly layers. Isn't it just stunning? Let me just quickly show you those layers again just because it looks so pretty. I will say that this croissant feels a lot lighter than the croissant that we had last week at Fly and Stone. Yeah, I say we because I just assumed that you watched episode 5 uh, as well. But yeah, I think the, the plain croissant that I had 
at Blindstone last week felt a lot heavier. This could also mean that this one is quite fluffy. Size-wise, I think it's quite generous as well. Yeah, it does smell quite good as well. So let's just dig in and see if it does taste good. It's not bad. I will say that it doesn't stand out when you compare it to some of the other bakeries that I've been to. But overall, taste-wise, I would still give this maybe like a 7 or 8 out of 10. So in other words, I think the plain croissant has kind of sort of passed the litmus test. I'm now eager to try out some of their other baked goods. And guys, when I saw this next pastry, I immediately knew that I had to get it. And that's because I like creme brulee and also Look at that, she is a beauty. I'm now gonna switch camera angles so that you get a real close up of this piece of pastry. And just really quickly as well, like one of the reasons why I knew I had to get this is because I am a huge fan of yum cha and you know what I like at yum cha? Egg tarts. And this kind of sort of looks like an egg tart. And so let's slice through that so we get to see what's inside and if it works out the way that I hope it works out you're going to hear a very nice crunch Ooh, the middle's like really custardy and soft as well okay, I think I got it okay. moment of truth guys look at that Wow. And so we have the sliced creme brulee danish right there. Look at that. I also just wanted to show you quickly this, uh, like the brown sugar on, this, on the surface as well, just because of how beautiful it is. The ratio of the custard, I don't know if you can see that, to the pastry is also, in my opinion, the only way it should be, which is a lot more custard than the pastry but also you do a little close-up of the pastry you can tell it's it's also got a lot of layers on it meaning that it's going to be super flaky and delicious and so i won't keep you hanging let's give this a go mm. guys if there's one thing you get at this place make it this I mean, I already had high expectations because like I said, I am a huge fan and well versed on the subject of egg tarts or Portuguese egg tarts or custard tarts, but this still kind of blew me away. I would give this a solid nine and a half out of 10. And next up we have a Baxia Bakehouse bestseller and that is a, this milk chocolate and almond praline chew. It says here on their website that it contains a milk chocolate ganache with crunch almond praline topped off with mascarpone cream and a cherry jam, a little bit of cherry jam on the top. So let me just remove that little label so you kind of get a little close up. And I'm now of course gonna change camera angles so you get a little bit more of a close up. The milk chocolate and almond praline chew. So let me give you a little close up from a different angle. I just love how beautiful it looks. I might be a little obsessed. Righto, so let's zoom in a little bit and let's, it feels a bit, <laughs> I feel kind of bad for destroying this beautiful piece of pastry, but we gotta do it. Ooh. Ooh, yum. Okay, let's have a look. Look at that. You can see it's got this thick ganache in the middle. So without further ado, let's give it a go. Mm. While it is chocolate, there's also a very strong hazelnut flavor to it. Pastry is crunchy and fresh. I think this is also pretty good. I'm gonna rate this maybe a eight out of 10. I also realized that maybe in all my food tours so far, I rarely do anything savory. And I guess that's because in a way, my mind divides savory food and sweets in kind of different categories. And in my head, bakeries are, well, 
always for sweets but of course we know that's not true and so when I saw this next piece of pastry I thought you know what maybe I should venture out of my comfort zone and try something different so today we have here a sweet potato danish the website says that it has pumpkin zat zata zata i think that's how you pronounce it goat's cheese stuffed with pine nuts sesame seeds and parsley I mean, all of that aside, I just think it's also a very beautiful piece of pastry. It's just so well done. And much like the other creme brulee uh, danish that we have before, you can also see the skills that go into making all these layers in the pastry. So now we are going to go put this on on my, the camera so you get a little nice close up and also a slice through. Yep, we have the pumpkin zeta da danish. I'm gonna give you a nice a little close-up. And guys, honestly, how could you not get this? The colors just look so beautiful. I just also wanted to give you a close-up of them layers. I mean, just look at that. And we're not gonna mess things up <laughs> by slicing through it. Ooh, listen to that crunch. Ready. So here we have the sliced through Danish. Let's give this a crack. Hmm, this actually is pretty good guys. I think the sweet potato and the goat's cheese kind of complement each other quite well. And the potato also has like a, a little spice kick to it as well. Guys, this is really good. I'm gonna rate this like a nine 9.5 out of 10. Mm. But you cannot go to Banksia and not get this next piece of pastry. I am of course talking about their famous wheel croissant that went absolutely viral last year and actually is almost always sold out but I did go on a weekday which kind of I guess increased my chances at getting my hands on one. And they periodically change uh, their flavors and the flavor of the moment I guess is uh, this Honeycomb Swirl Wheel Croissant filled with honey cream. It is a patisserie with an almond, honey and caramel praline topped, topped off with mascarpone cream, roasted almonds and honeycomb. And you can see the honeycomb right there if I allow the camera to focus. I mean guys, I uh, don't think I have ever been more excited to try a piece of pastry. So let's now go switch up camera angles so you get another close up of this badass and we're gonna do our usual slice through as well. Here's the wheel croissant. I don't think this is the best angle to showcase the wheel croissantness of it. <laughs> so here you go. You can tell, oh my god, look at those layers and just look at how well baked this piece of croissant is. You also get that little honeycomb bit at the top. And the mascarpone cream of course. I think this one's the almond praline. I saw so many TikToks of this wheel croissant being sliced through. So I think we should do it. Just gonna take apart this little label now. Say goodbye to this beautiful piece of art because we are about to slice through it. So, moment of truth. Ooh. Ooh. Oof. Okay, let's see. Wow. Check that out. Here we have it, the slice through of the honeycomb wheel croissant. Just a little close up so you can see it again. But let's give this a go. Hmm. Guys, I think this might be the best thing that I've tasted here. And what I can immediately say is the hype is real. I mean, I might be a bit biased, I think because of the honey. Um, the honey tastes a little bit like the uh, brown sugar boba, those huge boba milk teas, and I love milk tea. <laughs> this is freaking delicious. The honey 
flavor or element is especially prominent and when you mix it together with the cream the mascarpone cream it is just perfect the pastry in case you didn't already or couldn't already tell from the other from the other footages that I showed earlier is perfectly made I mean if I could rate this a 20 out of 10 I would in fact I, I can because well this is my tour so I'm gonna give this like a 20 out of 10 and if you get only one thing at the Bexia Bakehouse and make it this. So based off the five pastries that I tried at Bexia today, I don't know if Bexia is a, the best bakery in Sydney, but that's only because the standard set forth by the other bakeries I went to before this is so high. I still think it's worth checking out. The huge, huge, huge highlight for me in particular was their wheel croissant. Honestly, I was not expecting to like it at all given that it was so hyped up. Uh, all of last year uh, all over TikTok and Instagram and all of that and usually things that are kind of hyped up uh, tend to disappoint in person but this did not and in fact if I was to go back again this would be a the wheel croissant would be the pastry that would be first on my list of pastries to get but if you have been following this series so far, what do you think is the best bakery in Sydney? Let me know in the comment section. But if you haven't been following, that's okay as well. Do let me know in the comment section what is in your opinion the best bakery in Sydney so that I can add it to my list. I've also linked some of the other bakeries that I checked out in Sydney uh, at the end of this video so that you can go ahead and check out any of those next. I also have plenty of Sydney based content at YouTube does not allow links in the description box anymore but if you head to my profile and scroll through my playlist, Sydney playlist it should be playlist number three. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, informative, or perhaps just a little bit entertaining, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe. It is absolutely free to do, but it just helps my tiny little channel out so much. I also upload every Saturday, so be sure to also turn on that bell notification so that you can start your weekends with me. And if you made it to this point of the video, I want to genuinely thank you for your support. It truly means everything. I do hope that you have a fantastic day ahead or that you've already had a good day. As always, I will see you very soon in the next video.